So hello everyone. I'm going to talk about building an open source uh, community beyond the code. This talk is a bit uh, comes from a frustration of mine. Uh, I work with Pempot and I've been working for with them for like the past two years. And I've been in many, many, many open source events there. I get there and all they can have talk about community is code contributions, is commits, is GitHub issues. And then I'm like, man, we, we could go a little beyond that. We have more people that could be contributing that is not necessarily a code or can be a developer, but can contribute in other ways, no? So hopefully here I don't have to tell anyone why design is important. I hope here everybody is already convinced that is an important thing. Uh, I'm Carolina. I'm Brazilian, but I'm based in Madrid. And if you were not here yesterday and didn't have uh, was with the talk of Timothy that it was great about Pempot. I'm just going to give a little, little bit of introduction so you have a bit of context. So Pempot is this collaboration tool for designing code. So you can do mockups, prototyping, and also open source. Yes. So uh, our product is going great. Our community is, is growing day by day. So we have uh, more than uh, 600 K users, uh, a lot of projects, many GitHub stars and 42 language that is being translating for uh, this global audience. So uh, how we are trying to make this community a little bit more open, inclusive and diverse. Sometimes uh, people can think just because we are open source, uh, we're open, everybody going to know us, everybody going to just come and be part of this uh, amazing community. Not necessarily. We have to do some thought to make it actually open and inclusive. So our first mantra by, is open by default. So we try to do everything open. Uh, this was already mentioned yesterday, but we do have our uh, product management tool open for the public. You can go there and you can see whatever is happening, when it's happening, who is doing that, uh, why they're doing that with the descriptions and why maybe we're not doing things that we, the community wants. So uh, people can just go there, even they can comment. No one does, so it's okay. You even can comment if you have something to add on. Oh, I think that approach would be better than these ones that you guys thought, but well, it's there for everyone to see. And uh, But we also try to constantly uh, share uh, updates. So not only on Taiga that it, it has more or less the progress, but you also try to go to the community and say, hey, this is how it's going. What do you guys think? Uh, wh uh, what we could do different? Is it, is it the going in the right direction? So we are always like every part of the process trying to be transparent with the community. We also seek for diversity, can be diversity in roles. Makes sense. We are a design and developer, so we need both of them there. Uh, but it also can be gender and abilities or even geography. I'm not going to talk about all because then it would be too long talk here. I'm going to just focus on the, why, what we are doing for geography. So three things that we're doing uh, uh, actively right now. So we try to do a diversity ge geography also in, in uh, offline. So that means we're going to events that is many places. Uh, as I'm here, I was in Asia last month, but we are also making sure that when we are doing uh, organizing our event, we are bringing people from all, all over the place. It's easy to be uh, geographically diverse when you're online, but it makes a little bit more effort trying to do it uh, when you're on the offline world. Other thing we're doing is the top tier countries. This is just a fancy way to say we're small. We cannot think on every single one of the countries in the world. So we decided uh, actively to choose one, every single continent that we think that is most influential in open source, also influential in the, the area. And also makes sense for us to make sure that our impact is arriving there because it's easy for us to 
oh no yeah just we're doing english everybody's gonna know oh we're 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 trying to go everywhere but no if we're like actually thinking on let's go to nigeria let's work with this person who is doing this in that area let's go there and make sure that that uh special uh place is is, is being taken care of. and one of these uh from this one of the things we did is we are translating for three west africa languages uh Pembot. we're paying for local people to translate uh it's it makes sense it's easier to use a, a, a platform that is in your own language. Even sometimes you are a, a good enough in English, it, it makes more comfortable and it makes more, you feel home when you get there. It's like, oh, it's in my own language. Uh, <laughs> sorry if anyone is marketing here, but uh, we say deaf to the tone of voice. We are people. It doesn't mean that Pempot as a product doesn't have a ton of voice. It does. The marketing girls, they're there doing great with that. But in the community space, and we say that we're people. So I'm not a technical person. I'm not even a UX designer. Uh, so we, if I go there and explain with my own words, maybe someone who is just starting can understand better if our top, top designer come and super explain everything we are doing. So maybe different people with different roles and different expertise needed different people explaining that so i sometimes someone super technical go there and it's write something and i just go there like sorry i don't get what you're asking can you explain it again and then they explain another way and I, then every other people can understand and go and under and talk so um so we're trying to create inclusivity also in the right spaces uh as a, any other open source project we start in a repository and doing everything all the documentations all the issues uh there and then we at some point we like doesn't make any sense for us uh it's not a welcoming place for a designer uh, uh, average designer is going to go there and say like, oh, what I'm doing here, I don't even know. I know that the, the, the devs use this too, but I, it's not my space. So we changed. We are, now have a forum that is more like friendly for people that are not in that level of. And also we are trying to do it the right way. So again, designers are more visual. Designers are more uh express in 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 this this sense so it made sense that we go away from the text block and go for more the visual scenes so we start to use a lot of like uh video uh our team use a lot of free software to do the video all the blenders and so on and it makes a lot of sense for us to go more visual um another rule Community is not support, well, sometimes. So we think, th this is also uh, the way we like to think about the community. We don't think them like them and us. We are always thinking them as, as if they were part, one more team member, because I, oh, I want to share this with my team, but I don't want to put in the community yet because it's not that great yet. But why are you sharing with someone in the team though? If you, it's able enough to share with someone in the team is going to be good enough to share with the community. So it is something that for us, it made sense. We're not only there for support. We're also there for support if you need, <laughs> but we also there for feedback and ideations and sharing the comments with them. And the last rule that we always like is to uh, acknowledge and appreciate every single contribution. So even if it's a typo, even if it's a small, hey guys, maybe uh, this translation for English is not the best. It happens, we're all uh, the Spanish company. So sometimes the, our English is not the best English. So it, we do appreciate that uh, uh, small details. And this is just an exception, is us telling thanks for one contributor and then this own contributor telling uh, thanks, thanks you uh, for the contributor. Yeah, inception. Everybody thanking each other here. So that was great. 
And also, but how this, all this community, these uh, people around us is actually helping to shape Pembot? So uh, we always like to say that our great first contribution for anyone is just to say hi. It's just to say, I'm here, I'm using Pembot, I like it. I'm here for anything. So any of the first, first, first contribution for us in any case is high. So, but we are trying to think in other ways to make the the community able to 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 contribute. So libraries in templates is uh, quite specific for our uh, project. Wait, sorry. Uh, so, but it's a way that people that are maybe not technical or maybe just starting or maybe just wanting to contribute some way, they are going there and they can see and they can share. And also people who are coming also can work over uh, other people's projects. So you don't, maybe don't have to uh, start from the zero. You can already have one template and start from there. So it's this idea of uh, working over uh, each other. Another thing that I already mentioned is translations. We're uh, 42 languages right now, not all in 100%. So we have a lot in 100% translation. But as you can see, we could not be able at all to translate this as uh, only our team. Uh, it has even language that I don't know where they're from. And I had to Google, say like, oh, where is this language from? So that's great because it makes sense. Uh, someone may not be a designer, may not be a developer, but still are somehow interested in Pempa. Like, go there and you can put in your own language and you can translate it. So it's one of ways that people can interact uh, with our project. And we have many other ways of contributing that can be, of course, reporting bugs. We always uh, trying to find bugs and uh, making sure that the, the, the platform run smoothly. Documentation that sometimes mentioned when I was going to that conference that we're only talking about code. When they were going a little bit forward and code, they were talking, oh, maybe you can help us to document it. It's true. It's also nice, a good uh, contribution for us. Maybe you're missing something. Maybe you can fix something on the documentation. Just joining the community uh, space and be part of that and be helping with other people comments, other people can creating tutorials. So if you are good on making videos, or even if you're not that great, you still can make tutorials. You can still help people to, uh, to use. And just advocacy and outreach. So just talk about our product. It's also great contribution for us. And the last and one not least is using. Just use, just make sure that uh, uh, the, the platform makes sense for the people. But not everything is flowers. Not everything is easy. Even as we are uh, struggle on the, uh, like this product design core contributions. Uh, and we have some idea why they are hard. Uh, so, for example, uh, a lot of design vendors doesn't know even exist. So uh, sometimes we talk with designers and they, ah, oh, yeah, I, I know about open source, I know it exists, but they don't even know that it's a possibility to be part of it. And but even that uh, the designers are actively in the community, uh, maybe the tools were not well integrated with open source. Uh, we have great methodology, we have great workflows for how to do contributions and also the platforms for the code made it easier, but we didn't, we don't have that uh, figured out yet for how to do open source design contributions. And the last uh, point there is it's unclear and a really complex pr uh, process. So maybe you have your open source design that is available in a tool that makes sense, but then someone may have to, to get the file and then get uh, making the changes and then go back and then how I'm going to prove that change uh, is a good design. What is a good design? 
it is good enough. How am I going to tell them it's not good enough? So it, it adds some complexity that we are trying to figure it out. We had our first, let's say, core con design contribution last week with the Canonical team. They are the, the, the team that uh, built Ubuntu. And during their Hacktoberfest, uh, they did this week of trying to make a core contribution to Pempot. It was specifically for the grid layout uh, that was mentioned less, uh, uh, yesterday. And it was a complex uh, situation because we were in contact with them and they were in contact with us. So it was not like uh, an easy way. But I want to highlight that Canonical is thinking on how to make uh, more product design open source. So if you are interested, if you are a UX designer or just interested on this, figuring out this, they are starting a, a design product uh, group to discuss how can we as open source communities start to have better workflows and better methodologies. So just go to their page and you get, you'll find them. Uh, but it's, it's great. It's great that the, the community is trying to push this, is trying to figure it out how we can do better design in open source. Uh, one thing that is also good for us is trying to facilitate the information. So yeah, we have the FAQs, we have user guides, we have technical guide, contribute guide, everything there for the people who want. Oh, but also we try to really uh, load the barriers. One of the things we're doing uh, is starting initiatives. So if we do have initiatives that we want the community to take over, uh, but we don't know how, we do uh, start a little bit of it and then we just document and then, then expect someone to keep pushing. So that was made, uh, that, that was what we did with export Figma to Pempot. Uh, that was something that was really, really asked when Adobe tried to buy Figma. But uh, we were not able in that moment to fully commit on uh, making this export. So we did a little bit of push and then the community uh, kept going. It's still not 100%. So now we decide to, uh, that it's time for us to, to finish. So let's say like it was kind of like we started, the community keep pushing and now we're finishing to make the whole package. So that was great because we had this uh, uh, work together with the community to make this. Another thing that we try to really make clear is how to start. The typical good first issues on GitHub, but you can go forward. You can say, oh, the good first issues for design, what that means, what can the people do? Maybe for you, make maybe a logo, please. Try to think a little bit more than la logo because that's the first, all first good issues that uh, for a designer always. But maybe it may make sense for you to be a library template for us. Or maybe it's even a user testing. You you have this uh, nice tool that is being there for a while, but you have no idea if people are using or they're using the right way or how they're using. So maybe ask for a designer to just come and make a user testing for you. Is maybe. It, it can give you better uh, insights for, so. But all these, I would say that you need to prioritize. You need to spend time. You need to make a clear, clear path for how people can contribute. If you don't spend time on uh, helping people to contribute, it's gonna be even harder and even more trouble for the person to actually contribute. I've been in many workshops of on uh, open source design in these years, and I heard the both sides. I heard the people saying, uh, like uh, managers from the products, and like, oh, I really want designers to contribute. I would love to have them. I, I have no idea. And then I ask, like, oh, wow, cool. What do you have for them? Like, have you put anything up for asking help for help? Oh, actually, no. And I'm like, how are they gonna even figure it out that you're wanting help? And the same you hear from the designers, like, oh, I would love to help, I would love to, but I go to the, the, the repositories and I have no idea when to even start, not even how to contact to someone, not even how I can talk to someone. I make open an issue, but I'm like, 
I, sometimes even afraid to to ask for if I can help. And I, sometimes I even start to ask, but they don't know. They know they know they want me to help, but they have no idea how can I help. So that making sure that you provide this clear path of how people can contribute to your project uh, and makes ways move further for this contribution actually happening. So I will finish. Don't forget uh, to be open. Open source not necessarily mean open. You have to do a little bit beyond just the put code in a repository. You have to make sure that it's being open. Uh, you have to make sure that you seek for diversity. Um, uh, making sure that people are coming are from many places can bring uh, your project beyond uh, that it was going to be if you have only the same people coming and, and contributing. Acknowledge and appreciate, even if it's the smallest typo or even if it's uh, just something quite uh, small. Uh, makes this little effort of a person that per that makes them even more willing to do a bigger thing in the next time, and prioritize these contributions. Uh, I I I know it makes uh, sense, but a lot of people don't actually stop and do it. Sometimes you're like, I re I really wish wish that people would just come and contribute more. And I was like, but how much you are putting to them actually come and do, and do these contributions. So thank you.